So now that we've got our data map, we can start our translation journey. We will start with the outcome of personalization as defined in our transformation blueprint in chapter 2. So let's recap our data map from our telecommunications company. This is the map from which we'll be working while embarking on the personalization journey, working horizontally from the customer view to the product view. We will work from the context we defined in Chapter 3.2 as detailed here, looking at the area of customer experience, the intended outcome being personalization. So the first thing that needs to happen in a personalization journey is measurement. We need to understand our customer base in great detail in terms of who they are from a profile perspective, what they are consuming, and when. What you see on the left are our data sources listed from the data map. So in the measurement process, to figure out consumption patterns, we start with the sources highlighted in red. These are the sources that will give us the information we need in terms of measuring our base from a consumption perspective. Next, we look at billing. This will give us information about our customer base from a spending perspective. From the information we've been able to gather, we can structure a number of outputs. We can describe our customer base in many ways. For example, an estimation of the types of devices our customers are using so that when we design apps, we know which types of devices or operating systems we should prioritize. We can see which periods customers tend to take up more products or less, and we can see what kind of products are popular with customers, as well as other activity trends that can help us understand our customer base better. We can derive quite a bit of value from this exercise. We can intimately understand our customers better and be able to monitor changing patterns so that we're always a step ahead in terms of meeting customer needs. We can also be better prepared to defend our position in the market as the competitive landscape changes. Understanding your customer base better than anyone means being able to respond to their needs better. If your organization has rotated to the data-driven mindset, then it also means being able to respond to those needs faster, thus lowering the risk of disruption to your organization or being able to navigate unexpected disruption more successfully. Next, we move on to the profiling where we intend to understand the various customer profile groups that we unearthed in the measurement step in greater detail. The key outputs here are profiling trends, such as demographic and psychographic trends. Here we get to understand the thinking processes our customers go through when engaging with our products and services, as well as their behaviors in terms of consumption and spending on various products and services within defined profile groups. Some of the key value derived here include being able to engage with different types of customers in a way that is appropriate for that profile of customer. Advertising and support can also be performed in a more targeted way so as to achieve better results. Then, once we've got our profile data, we can start to segment our customer base. We will need a lot of data to be able to do this, over and above the data we have been using for measuring and profiling.
we can start to segment our customer base based on two methods, value-based segmenting as well as needs-based segmenting. Value-based segmenting deals with customer value with regards to their income, likely spend, strategic importance, credit risk, and so forth. Needs-based segmentation, on the other hand, deals with segmenting the customer base based on customer common set of needs and purchasing behaviors. The value of segmentation lies in being able to approach product development in a customer-centric way thus maintaining relevance in the market and being able to strongly resonate with existing and potential customers. Ideally, if measurement, profiling and personalization are done correctly, then a hyper-personalization opportunity arises where we get to know customers' needs and pain points before they tell us, or better still, before they know it. We get to evolve with each of our customers in real time, and we're able to expeditiously respond with relevant and highly effective operational interventions and more importantly, strategic initiatives that generate good value for both the business and the customer. So going back to our telecommunications example, this is a hyper-personalized view of SIPO as a customer from a customer support perspective. If this is the view that appears on a customer agent's dashboard, when SIPO calls or logs a call or complaint on a social media platform, then the support process becomes one that will yield positive results for SIPO in terms of quickly identifying and solving its problem, as well as one for business from a brand experience and customer retention perspectives. So at this point, we can now drill down deeper into SIPO's hyper-personalized profile and learn whatever information is fruitful to us at any given point to be able to offer SIPO a delightful customer experience. We get to know things such as Sipo's current device and whether he's on prepaid or on contract. We can pinpoint where he's likely to reside, but because he's a prepaid customer, we don't have his exact address and age since this is user inputted data at the sign-up stage of a contract package. Perhaps we can pull this data from a Rika database. However, it's quite common for people to get SIM cards recut by relatives and friends, so this is not always accurate data. So for accuracy's sake, we'll assume we don't know SIPO's address and other specific demographic data. We can categorize his activity according to our product and service mix. We can also break down his spending profile in line with the product and service mix. Similarly with his service usage profile. We can go further and break down his device history so that we can see how his device usage has been evolving. We can do the same with his SIM card history and pick up some interesting patterns that might help us understand SIPO better. We can further break down his activity into more enlightening patterns and trends. Similarly with his spending profile.
as well as his usage profile. We can break down his usage patterns and trends per product or service. This information can be very helpful, especially with those products and services that either have great strategic importance for the business in future, or those that are high revenue drivers that are either in growth or deadline stage. We continue with the same trend to learn as much as we possibly can about Sipo so we can better service him in the future. Now with analytics and AI, we don't have to structure and store millions of these hyper-personalized profiles for each customer. The data ecosystem and analytics models should be able to pull the most recent data in real time and paint this picture for each customer at any given moment and display it on a dashboard for support or strategic purposes. This is the smarter, more effective disruption navigation way of doing things, rather than the customer journey mountains being built to meet momentary customer needs that may very well change tomorrow, necessitating constant changing of customer journeys, which is impractical, inefficient, and strategically crippling. Hyper-personalization is one of the more value-maximizing translation journeys in this digital data-driven platform age. It really pays well to invest in it. And we've now come to the end of chapter 3.3.1. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now.